This video is going to be about nitrogen asphyxiation, or inert gas asphyxiation. I make this video with some hesitation because of the topic of killing livestock using nitrogen, or killing livestock in general. I won't be including any footage of the actual killing using nitrogen for those sensitive viewers. I primarily am making this video so that people are more educated on the use of an inert gas asphyxiation, because most of the people who post about this sort of thing use CO2, or they use a chamber in which no existing atmosphere can escape, which probably puts the animal through undue stress. If you look up killing poultry with nitrogen, you'll find one of the top results, Humane Slaughter Association, advocating the technique. There are many other sources that advocate the technique. But why use nitrogen or some other inert gas? The reason is because many life forms can't actually sense a lack of oxygen due to the way their respiratory system functions. You can see on Wikipedia, inert gas asphyxiation is a form of asphyxiation which results from breathing a physiologically inert gas in the absence of oxygen, or a low amount of oxygen, rather than atmospheric air, which is largely composed of nitrogen and oxygen. Examples of physiologically inert gases which have caused accidental or deliberate death by this mechanism are argon, helium, nitrogen, and methane. The term physiologically inert is used to indicate a gas which has no toxic or anesthetic properties and does not act upon the heart or hemoglobin. Instead, the gas acts as a simple diluent to reduce oxygen concentration in inspired gas and blood to dangerously low levels, thereby eventually depriving all cells in the body of oxygen. NASA actually published about this phenomenon due to a tragedy, as you can see here. As ground crews worked diligently to prepare for the launch, a group of technicians collapsed inside Columbia's nitrogen-filled aft compartment after a countdown demonstration test. You can read more about this incident in the link that I posted in the description. PETA also writes about the case for controlled atmospheric killing. A lot of things can go wrong during conventional processes used for slaughtering animals. One of the biggest mistakes I see when people talk about inert gas killing is the use of CO2. Unfortunately, CO2 has pretty dramatic physiological effects because the primary mechanism used for breathing is the feeling of increased CO2 in the body. This causes unpleasant gasping, as well as carbonic acid buildup in the mucous membranes, which is quite unpleasant. If you can imagine inhaling after opening a bottle of Coca-Cola and the feeling that you get as it burns your nostrils. Here you can see that although you can have CO2 in the mixture, more than 30% carbon dioxide is not recommended, however, as birds show aversion to CO2 by gasping, shaking their heads, stretching their necks to breathe and showing signs that in humans are associated with pain and panic. Although the only version of this document from the United Kingdom I could find is technically out of date, it does have some guidelines that may be useful. The controlled atmosphere stun killing chamber used must have a means of visually monitoring the birds when they are inside. Any window must permit observation of the birds in order that any problems related to the welfare of the birds can be identified quickly and action taken immediately to rectify them. Upon further reading, you can see there is more information about the gas mixtures. The permitted gas mixtures for controlled atmosphere stun killing in the UK are argon, nitrogen, or other inert gases, or any mixture of these gases in atmospheric air with a maximum of 2% oxygen by volume. So the case for inert gas asphyxiation is pretty clear considering that humans can't even identify the lack of oxygen. Neither can birds. Nitrogen is fairly easy to obtain with high purity from most welding supply shops. If you're trying to actually calculate dimensions, I like to use two times the entire cubic space of atmosphere within the chamber. In calculating standard cubic feet, you can roughly assume that the chamber's holding capacity will be approximately height times width times depth. Doubling this will be a safe bet. One thing you do not want to happen is running out of the inert gas. This can cause brain damage if the animal is still alive. When looking up this topic, I was able to find somebody who was using a gas for killing poultry. However, in their video, they are using CO2, which is very unpleasant. And the other dramatic mistake was that they had no outlet lit for the gas displacement. Most likely the bird suffered a very gruesome death, which would have been known if the unit had some kind of window in order to see inside. Still, for killing a single bird, 
using a 5 gallon bucket is not a bad idea. You would simply need some kind of connection at the top to allow entrance of gas, and a small hole on the bottom to allow exhaust of the existing atmosphere in order to bring the oxygen level down below 2%. In my own chamber design, I tried to take into consideration all of the elements that I read in various guides. Considering that I kill a range of birds, generally chickens or guinea fowl, I constructed the chamber to be approximately 4 feet by 4 feet by 2 feet, with a top that can be removed in order to gather the birds after death. Most of the chamber is sealed with caulk and latex paint or weather stripping. My design has a list of key considerations, small gaps around the door for exhaust of existing atmosphere, legs to keep the floor even with the ground, basic framing for structural integrity, weather stripping for air tightness, a removable top for maintenance and gathering the birds, windows for death confirmation. Death confirmation with inert atmospheric asphyxiation is when the bird has stopped all of its breathing. You'll actually see death throes at this point as well, as the body convulses. I have a door used for the birds to enter themselves. This door is not airtight, which is fine because the exit of the existing atmosphere has to exhaust from some point. I heavily painted the surfaces for air tightness using a latex paint that is designed for maximum Maximum coverage. Finally, I caulk the edges for air tightness on all of the seams. Here you can see the basic framing of the chamber. I used 2x2 two two boards because it doesn't have to be very strong. Here you can see the acrylic panels I'm going to be using for the windows and door. You can see the framing used for the top where the windows will sit. The top also inserts inside of the existing framing, which I use some OSB to cover. The acrylic panels are also in place in this footage. Here you can see the bottom of the chamber. Here you can see where the door is going to slide. In this footage, you can see things are fairly trimmed. I used some felt to reduce friction and help seal the door a little bit. I also added many handles so that two people could move the chamber easily. Here's the inside of the top which fits over the chamber. And here you can see the two parts aligned. There is about an inch of overlap where the weather stripping helps seal. Finally, this footage is from after I used the chamber successfully with some guinea fowl. I don't generally raise birds for meat and the batch that I killed actually were not raised for meat either. A fox kept coming and taking them one by one one every single day because they did not want to go to bed early enough. And so instead of letting the fox finish them off, I decided to simply kill the birds myself and then give some to the neighbors for meat. You may be wondering how gruesome the experience was. The process went something like this. As the nitrogen was filling the chamber, I was not very confident that it would work at all. The birds seemed fully aware and they did not seem to be very stressed by the situation or even aware of the gas that was filling the chamber. After a few minutes, the birds looked a little bit confused and stumbled slightly, but did not appear to be aware of what was happening or panicked in any way. They also did not have any gasping. I would say after five minutes they were all dead and had performed their death throes and stopped breathing. I confirmed this through the windows easily. I'm making this video because of the misconceptions surrounding killing livestock. There are a lot of situations where, even as a hobbyist, you have to kill livestock due to external factors, broken legs, poisoning from a plant that was eaten while the bird is suffering, aneurysm where the bird is half paralyzed from brain damage, birds that are attacked by predators and left for dead but are not actually dead yet, birds that may be diseased and interfere with the existing flock. Other advantages of using inert gas asphyxiation would be the lack of blood getting on the feathers in case you want to save the pelt. If you're wondering about the draining of blood from killing with inert gas, you have to hang the birds upside down after cutting their heads off once they've already died. Nitrogen does have some preservative effect on the body and the meat. I hope that you found this helpful and educational and I hope that it convinces you to try something like nitrogen or argon with less than 30% CO2 mixed. If you have much empathy for your livestock, it's definitely a better way to kill them. Some other notes about this. I do have some concerns about children playing with tanks of nitrogen or entering such chambers used for killing with nitrogen. For these reasons, I don't recommend the chamber be fully assembled at all times. I also have my nitrogen tank in an area that's well ventilated. Thanks for watching.